And as I mentioned, you can even come in and actually do your purchase requisitions right from within uh, SDE. So we can come in and uh, say we we're you know open up a purchase request. Who do we want to purchase this from? If the purchase request had come as a result of an incident requiring a part to be ordered or a work order having had to order a part or even or a replacement machine, that uh, association to that particular work order number or incident number would automatically show up there. This uh, particular uh, purchase request is on behalf of uh, Brian Cotter here. Uh, here are the pricing, the totaling of the pricing that we're going to have here. Uh, here are the items that uh, that we are purchasing, and I can just add to it. I go out, I pick my appropriate uh, configuration item that I want to uh, add to it. I've got this in receive mode, so it's it's blanking that out, but that's okay. Uh, obviously, a complete per date and time stamp uh, purchase history of the various approvals and phases that it went through. And so all of that can be done very quickly, and you just move it through whatever your defined sequences of steps are for a purchase request to be created uh, in your environment. So you create it, you do your approvals, you maybe get it to procurement. Ultimately, you get it into this receive state, and when they come in, then I would just click on the uh, actual line item, or I could do it as the, well, the purchase request as a whole. But in this case, I ordered 10. I would indicate how many I received. And as soon as I save that out, that then makes this new item available in SDE inventory for you to be able to then take that asset and, uh, and assign it out to the appropriate uh, assembly group or assembly ID that's going to be the uh, user of that. So let me close a couple of things there. So the other thing that you get that we mentioned is the ability to set up preventative maintenance schedules around either asset classes or particular assets uh, themselves. And what the preventative maintenance is, is it's an automatic work order that will get generated on behalf of that particular asset for something that you want to happen on a reoccurring basis. So I'll just grab one that I've got here. Uh, here we've got a troublesome client out here that we want to make sure that uh, we always keep an up-to-date uh, ghost image that are out there or whatever. So the preventative schedule that I set up here was that I wanted for this particular configuration item, and this was that Dell laptop that I had up and was working with earlier that was being used by uh, Scott Bellow. Uh, I said that I want an automatic work order to be generated uh, once a quarter uh, starting on this day and to be assigned to this technician in this group, and of course that would then show up uh, in that when that person logged into SDE, it would show up in their work queue as well as, of course, they would get uh, they would get an email letting them know that an additional work order has now been uh, has now been assigned to them. Uh, likewise, you could do it against the class of assets. So here's where we set up one on uh, HP laser jet toners. So if we look at this one, we said it's not against a, a, a unique serial number configuration item, but it's, a, it's on a class or a type of assets. And again, we said to proactively go out and see what the, whether the toner cartridges needed to be replaced once every three months. This day just goes to the desktop support group, not to, a, uh, not to an individual. And then keep in mind also that we find that many of our clients who have SDE, and especially when they use the asset management uh, portion of that, that they start to think of how could I use this in areas outside of traditional IT. And so you'll notice I uh, had a hospital this morning wanting to talk about, well, what's my preventative maintenance we have to do on certain medical-related equipment based on actual laws that they're subject to? And, Here's one where on a given uh, defibrillator, these types of steps and recordings have to be done every four months. So we set up a recurring maintenance schedule to go out. Here's what you need to do. Here's the frequency with which it would, uh, with which it would go out. Or in, a, in another case, we've had some of our customers doing it and doing facilities uh, basic uh, management in here. So likewise, you want to make sure that you're getting your annual service to your boilers and your HVAC equipment on some periodic basis. So you can start to use your uh, your imagination there as to why that becomes uh, critical in the uh, in the process there.
And then the last one I'll, I'll touch on just because if you, if you do change management, you really have to do asset management because there's really no other way to truly get an understanding of the changes that you're going to be doing. So if I just pull up a, a change record here where we're having to do some major work in this case on our, uh, on our network here, you can see that in order to assess this change, it would be great if I could identify the assets or the configuration items that would be affected by that change and to be able, when I assign actual people to go out and do things to servers or network cards or whatever, that they could go out and get that visual view of, hey, if I take this down, are we going to lose a critical business service or whatever? It just becomes kind of a, uh, a very important part of doing effective, uh, effective change management. But at a minimum, uh, I think there are a lot of benefits, as Dan talked about, to be gained by at least doing your configuration management right here within Service Desk Express, and then at a minimum at least tying it into your incidents and work orders so you can build out that all-important uh, uh, service management history of what's being done there. And you will see in some of the follow-on uh, webinars that we do, like Dan mentioned, that we have a barcode scanning system that helps you do receiving and, and audit verifications and all. And you'll see that those types of add-on technologies also write directly into that service uh, history record that we looked at there. So all, everything that we do within SDE ties back to that core uh, configuration item contained in SDE's you know, configuration uh, management uh, database. So Dan, I think with that, we, we certainly hit on the highlights of asset management, configuration management. So maybe let's uh, open it up and uh, take a few questions.